Yo, what is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got another one here today. This one is a 2006 Honda Civic. Customer brought it over to me and they said they got a couple issues. The main issue that they're having is that their battery keeps going dead. They had three batteries replaced. They had an alternator replaced. Somebody told them that they had a short or they had a drain in the system. They brought the car over to me and we're going to check it out and hopefully we find a drain in this car because they said that it's intermittent. You can go months driving the car and the issue won't be there but then out of, out of nowhere one day you go out to start your car and it's dead. Alright, they also did mention check engine light. They mentioned drivability issues. We're going to see if these drivability issues the check engine light, any codes that are stored in memory, we're going to see if it's all interrelated somehow. But right now I got the scanner hooked up right here. Uh, we're going to look at the codes and see what's stored in memory. And then we'll take it from there. Let's go. Okay, key on. I got my scanner hooked up right here. I've already got it set up, 2006 Honda Civic. We're going to go ahead and do a quick code scan. And this is going to scan all the systems in the car and we're gonna see what we have here so key on yes let's go so i'm gonna let everything load up right here okay right away engine performance codes let's see this is for the check engine light but as i said the check engine light was not on so let's see right here p1684 throttle valve return spring performance problem 42 percent detected still going i'm gonna let this load up and then we're gonna take a look at all the other modules all right guys very important very 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 important when you guys get a car like this with multiple issues it's good that you question your customers i tell you guys that all the time once you question your customers and they give you answers you're already one step ahead you're already diagnosing in your head so right here we have a parasitic draw a potential parasitic draw because they say they replaced their battery three times they said they had a check engine light they said they had drivability issues we could have one thing that's causing all three problems or we could have three separate issues. We got a brand new battery under the hood. We got a brand new alternator, um, check engine light and drivability. So we're gonna see if one problem will lead us to everything. So always, always question your customers and you'll be one step ahead, all right? So let's see where we're at on the scanner. Okay, then we have some more uh, ABS codes. So these say modulator control circuit ignition high, modulator control ignition low voltage low voltage ignition voltage so I am not worried about any of these throttle valve return spring performance problem we're gonna look at that code for them just to see what could be causing that and then we're also gonna look at this short and passenger airbag cutoff indicator but what I'm gonna do right now is just focus on the parasitic draw so I'm gonna go ahead and clear all these codes actually I want to clear everything that's in all the modules clear all codes read by the scan tool and then we're gonna start fresh. So once this whole thing clears, we're gonna focus on the parasitic draw and see if we can find a drain in the system. Okay, so let me clear the codes and then we'll come back right now. We have uh, one code stored in, in the PCM. It's a P1684 throttle valve control return spring or something like that. We have codes in the airbag module and we have codes in the ABS module. So cleared everything. I'm going to leave it like that. Right now I'm going to go focus on the parasitic drain. So let's go under the hood. We're going to make sure that all the accessories are off. We're going to make sure that all the doors are closed. Make sure everything is turned off as if the car was parked overnight. Nothing should be on. And then we're going to check. We're going to go around the battery cable. And we're going to check to see if we have a drain at the moment. So let's go. All right, guys, I got the scope right here set up. I'm going to be using this low amp clamp. I'm going to be saying, setting it on 20 amps right there and then what i'm going to do on the scope i hooked up right here for those of you that want to see i just went black on black and red on the yellow which is channel one so i'm going to go under low amps 20. so we're set up on five amps i'm going to go ahead and hit reset right here and there's a little arrow right here on the amp clamp and i want that pointing away from the negative battery cable right there so we're reading parasitic drain and let's see what we got here. We're looking at that number that says live and it says 0 0.01. That is 10 milliamps. That is absolutely nothing. That draw right there will not make your car uh, not start. That is not a big drain. Anything over one amp should be a problem. This is 10 milliamps, not even 100 milliamps. Okay, so this right here, 
uh, shows us that we have no drain so check it out guys we got a brand new battery November 2019 right there uh, I already checked the post they're pretty tight on there so I'm not worried about that and customer also said that they had a brand new alternator um, maybe before the battery and everything else looks pretty good so there's nothing out of the ordinary here nothing um, that jumps out at me I took off the fuse cover so I can start pulling fuses but we don't have a drain right now and this is exactly what the customer said that it comes and goes it's not something that happens right now it's not something that happens overnight they said that it was kind of random so what I'm gonna do right now since we have no drain and this is the thing about intermittent guys you gotta you gotta catch it when it's happening or else you're not gonna catch it um, I'm gonna take all this off I'm gonna go drive it I'm gonna use the accessories lights turn signals horn AC everything I'm gonna try to duplicate what the customer would do on a regular day which is go to work drive it use everything on the car and then we're gonna come back and park it and then we're gonna come back and check for another drain uh, because right now as we speak 0 0.02 that's 20 milliamps that is perfectly normal uh, there is absolutely no drain here all right guys in the car I'm about to go drive this car I'm gonna turn on the AC right here turn on the lights I'm basically gonna turn everything on and I'm gonna see if anything stays stuck on all right so let's go drive it and see what happens okay I'm an oops much 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 later okay guys just pulled up to the pad we're gonna park this we're gonna turn the AC off turn the car off we're gonna pop the hood open and we're gonna check for another drain and we're gonna hook up the scope and see if we got a drain going on right now so let me hook it up and then we'll start checking again And as you guys can see right there, 0 0.02 on the live, and that is not a drain. So, to show you guys that everything is working fine, I'm gonna hit the alarm, I'm gonna unlock it. And you guys can see right there, you can see that number change. So, I think I got, a, I got the M clamp backwards here. So, let me fix it, zero it again, and put it right there. So, right now we have. 0.15 that is 150 milliamps I'm gonna go ahead and lock the car okay you can see the alarm activate well the doors lock and after about a minute or so that live number should go down once that module goes to sleep so right now is at 270 milliamps so we'll just keep an eye on it and you guys will see it go down and if it doesn't go down that means we have a drain going on right now all right guys so it's been a little while I've been doing some testing, pulling fuses, checking for the drain, and what I thought was a drain was actually not a drain. Uh, the alarm wasn't locked, and then it locked on its own, and that's what's happening. So, uh, this drain is not there right now. So, like the customer said, it is intermittent. The car doesn't just die overnight. It happens for a couple months, and then, I don't know where, you can't start it one day. So, there's definitely something going on with the car. It's just not happening right now. So, as we speak, I got the scope. Uh, turned on and I got the amp clamp around the negative uh, cable right there and as you guys can see still we are at 0 0.01 which is 10 milliamps so that is not a draw I actually have the key out of the car right here now I want to show you guys this is what's happening so I hit unlock on the car and you can see that the draw goes I'll put the key right here okay so the draw goes up and then once that module goes back to sleep then that draw goes away so right now focus we're at 170 milliamps uh, once the doors lock they will lock on their own after about I think right there they just locked alright so that module woke up and then it goes back to sleep so right there 0 0.02 that right there is perfectly normal guys there is no draw right now there's no parasitic drain so 0 0.02 is perfectly normal guys anything above 0 0.05 0 0.06 is still okay but this right here is absolutely perfect all right so i'm gonna leave it right here i'm gonna go grab a bite give me some brain food and then i'll come back and check something else on this 06 honda civic yep Alright guys, and we're back and we're still working on this 2006 Honda Civic. 
1.8 liter engine trying to get it to act up but I can't get it to act up if my life depended on it all right so look I've had my amp clamp hooked up like I showed you guys earlier 0 0.20 0 0.30 of an amp which is 30 milliamps which is perfect um, not a parasitic drain at all I left it alone I said maybe while I'm gone something's gonna act up I went to test drive it I used the AC I used the lights I used the door locks I used all the accessories that I can think of and nothing the only thing I noticed was the the dome lights weren't working but if they're not working that means they're not drawing any amperage and with the with the amp clamp hooked up right here I didn't get any amp draw no parasitic drain so I had no direction to go so what I did next was I tried something different. I hooked up my voltmeter or my ammeter in this case. I put it right there and as you guys can see it's only drawing 20 milliamps. So one alligator clip goes on the terminal and the other one goes on the battery post. So it's pretty much connected in series and it's reading only 20 milliamps. No parasitic drain at all. So I spoke to the customer. He said it was two he had the original battery, then he put two batteries from AAA, and I know that AAA batteries aren't the greatest, so I wanted to blame it on the battery. But then he said that he in installed this interstate battery, and that's when they told him to replace um, the alternator also, and he had a problem even after that. So <sighs> there's definitely something going on here, but it's very intermittent, and I'm not able to catch it. Okay, but I don't know if you guys remember from, if you guys are OG subscribers, you guys seen my videos. I'm going to put a video up here on the top right of your screen. I've had this problem on many Civics, on some Odysseys, on some other Hondas. And these are notorious for the AC relay being stuck on. Now on this one, I couldn't catch that. But I think that's what we're dealing with. There is a bad AC relay on the Civic. Now I don't like to make calls like this. But based on what I saw, I think I'm going to call this a bad AC relay. So let me show you what I found. Uh, this right here, if you guys have a Civic, look at these two green relays. The one right below it, this one right here is the AC relay. So I just wanted to look at it just because I know that from experience, these are known to go bad. And when I took it out, let me show you what I found. Hopefully you guys can pick it up on camera. You see that? That is corrosion buildup on the pin. And I believe those are the control side of the relay. And just based on that, I'm going to make the call that this is a bad relay. First, first of all, because relays are not that expensive. This thing is probably like 20 bucks. And um, I, I've, I know that these are notorious for that. These Hondas always have bad AC relays. And this one, I couldn't catch it when it was sticking or when it was stuck. But just based on this corrosion that I see here. If you guys know me, you guys know that I don't like to make calls like that. Based on my experience with these Hondas and based on the price of this relay, which is not a lot, I'm going to make the call that this is a bad AC relay and we're going to see. I'm I'm going to have I'm going to have to stay in contact with this customer and he's going to let me know if he's having problems with the car later on down the road or not. The next <laughs> the next morning all right homies what is up it is the next day just picked up the ac clutch relay for this 2006 honda civic and i want to show it to you guys this is part number 20742 can you guys see that right there duralast part number 20742 and they had it in stock so it looks to me like this is a very common issue like i told you guys so we're gonna pop this on and there's not going to be any difference in amperage that I'm going to be able to show you guys. So before I put it on the car, I want to do a quick resistance check across the two terminals on this relay and compare them to, and compare them to the other relay. So maybe that we can catch something there. And then after that, probably open it up and see what it looks like inside. And, that, and after that, we're going to go ahead and do the giveaway from the previous video. We're going to pick a winner. And then that's going to be it for this one, homies. Let's go. Okay, guys. So I got my ohmmeter set up right there. I got my two alligator clips right here, okay? All I'm gonna do is go across the relay. So this right here, this is an old relay. You guys can see the corrosion right there on the bottom. So I'm gonna hook up the two alligator clips right here on each of those pins, and we're gonna see what the reading is on this, on this chingadera. Okay, so there you go. I'm biting both of those terminals, and we're reading about 160 ohms 
okay and this is on the relay that just came out of the car with the corrosion on the terminals this is a new relay that I just picked up from the zone we're gonna put it across the same two terminals and we have about 122 122 so there is a difference in ohms but there's also a difference in temperature so maybe once this relay on my left hand maybe once this one cools down it'll probably read about the same ohms or maybe it's just so corroded that it that it has a lot more resistance okay so um let me open this relay up let me see what it looks like inside and then we'll see if we find something interesting all right guys took the relay apart came all came apart in a bunch of little pieces because i had to take it off with pliers but honestly the corrosion that i expected to be inside the relay is not as bad as i expected it to be so you can see right here these two contacts these are the contacts this this will be like pin 30 and 87 looking at the relay the two contacts that I, that had corrosion pin 85 and 86 which are the control side these two copper ones are pin 30 and 87 which is the load side of the relay and the corrosion that i see is right here on the contact so you can see how this contact moves like that okay that's what makes contact to allow a uh, current to flow from pin 30 to 87 so it's not as bad as I thought it's not as bad as I expected but it doesn't take that much corrosion to give you electrical problems so we're just gonna go ahead and put the new relay on the car and we're gonna see what happens all right so now let's go on to the giveaway and see who wins the two flip sockets from the previous video let's go Boom. Okay, guys, this is how we're going to be doing this giveaway. I'm going to go over to my YouTube channel right here. Now, where I'm doing the giveaway is on this Toyota Sienna brake job video. So if you guys don't win today, check out this Toyota Sienna video. I went ahead and put links to all the tools that I used in that video. So if you don't win, check the description if you want to pick up some tools. And that goes for any of the other videos too. Okay, so I'm going to take this video. I'm going to copy the link right here. And I'm going to take it over to pickawinner.com. I'm going to paste it. And we're going to see how many comments we got on this video. So anything goes, we put a filter. If you guys remember, we had a filter. And the filter was hashtag chingadera. So let me just type that in real quick. Chingadera. Right there. So if you didn't include hashtag chingadera right there or you misspelled it, then you're not going to be entered in the giveaway, okay? So we're going to hit continue. And and it's loading the comments we have 119 comments so 119 of you guys commented hashtag chingadera we're gonna go ahead and pick a winner right now good luck to all of you guys remember if you don't win go check out the videos check out the description the links are right there so ready one two Bye. Joel Saragosa what's a fair labor quote to replace brake pads and rotors all around on my car i had parts in hand please help hashtag chingadera joel saragosa hit me up on instagram i'll put my instagram right there homie hector and send me a dm let me know where you want the flip sockets shipped i'll get them sent to you joel saragosa hit me up on instagram i'm gonna get these sockets sent out to you homie all right let's go okay guys so there it is 2006 honda civic with a 1.8 liter engine parasitic drain so if you guys have a 2006 honda civic with a parasitic drain your battery keeps dying overnight check that ac clutch relay that might just be your problem it's a very common issue on hondas so if you have a, a honda with a parasitic drain or a battery that's dying overnight go ahead and check that relay because that might be your problem all right so i'm gonna end the video right here guys but before we go i just want to ask you guys what do you guys do when you guys have a car that has an intermittent issue like this do you guys try to keep the car overnight do you guys charge more for your diagnostic that's the question leave the comments down in the comment section below i'm also going to put a link to the other video that I did on a Honda Civic where I showed you guys a parasitic drain on that one I actually caught the drain while it was happening it was about a two and a half amp draw on this one couldn't catch it but with the corrosion on the relay I think that's gonna do it for this guy so that's gonna be it for me guys 2006 Honda Civic 1.8 liter engine parasitic drain don't forget to subscribe hit the bell and this way you guys get notified for more videos and more giveaways Peace.